elements here and then make a group out of them. Represents my first direction and then my first direction interim curve and then my third curve for the first direction. And then I'll pick my second directional curves. And now I've defined my boundary surface. But you can see that I need to control that fluting as it goes from the rear to the front. So what I'm going to do is add connectors to go through the surface. So here you can see if I can add connectors going from the front to the rear, I can actually use those connectors to control the shape of the surface. So I've added two connectors here. I'm going to snap them to vertices in the sketch and then go to the end where it connects to the spoon and those reference points I made, I'm going to snap those connectors to them. And now the, I have something very powerful here. I can use these connectors to control the overall shape of this fluted spoon area. So I'm going to drag these connectors and get it to the shape that I want. And you can see through the feedback I get a pretty in, good indication of, of that shape that is really the design intent. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So now all we need to do is knit these surfaces together, mirror them, and then make it solid. But before I do that, I see that here in my spoon area, I have a dip. So I'm going to split my screen and then use my dynamic modify to pull on that curve in the first boundary surface and correct this condition. So using my bottom screen portion, I'm going to edit that sketch and then by pulling on it, I'm going to observe in the upper viewport my result. So pulling on the weighting will affect the shape of that surface. And you can see here I've done a fairly good job of flattening it out. There's a little bit of waver here. And if I spend more time on it and add perhaps some more control to that curve, I can get it just right. I can also use my property manager and add very explicit values. And then put some curvature on it and observe if I'm getting a good rate of curvature. It looks like I am. So I could probably tweak on that a bit more, but for right now, that's pretty good. Let's go back to a single view and hide some sketches and then roll forward. second boundary. So I need to knit these together. So I'll go to Insert Surface Knit. Pick the two surfaces, knit them together. And then take that knitted surface and mirror it across the right plane. Now with my mirror and my original knit, I can knit both of those together. And now that I have a single surface body, I can use that to thicken. Let's change the value down to 025. Perhaps make it a little bit thicker. and complete my feature and now I have my solid model that represents my spoon. Let's add some small radiuses to the edges. Let's hide this sketch first. And by picking these edges, you get my preview. 
Let's turn my preview off and then pick the other edges, both top and bottom. And then complete my radius feature. Let's add the, make a value that is perhaps a little bit smaller. And now I have my radiuses on the edge of the spoon. I've created a, a simple sketch in the rear portion to trim off the back to make it rounded. So I'm simply just going to use this open profile to cut away the rear area of the end of the spoon and give it a rounded feel. And then my final feature is to add a radius to that surface, or that face. So I'm going to pick the entire face use a 15 thousandths radius. So that completes my exercise for this spoon. You can see how easy it is to use Boundary to make complex objects like this. Thank you for viewing this short demonstration. If you have any questions about Boundary or other SOLIDWORKS features, feel free to visit our website at www.solidworks.com or you can call a local reseller with the numbers that I provided for you on the screen. Thank you.